In this video, we will be talking about text block and text box controls. Both very basic controls you're almost guaranteed to use in every application you make. These are very straightforward controls and shouldn't need much explanation. So what is a text block? A text block is a very useful control for displaying text in your application. Very similar to a label in WinForms, but unlike a label, the text block is designed for multi-line purposes. What is a text block used for? Generally, just to display plain text to users. More specifically, to title controls in your application, title pages in your application, display warnings, alerts, and tips to your users, or just provide general instructions to your users. So after this brief explanation, let's jump into opening our Visual Studio and play around with text block controls. So now we can create a text block. And we do so as many controls by just having opening and closing tags of what we want. So opening and closing tag of text block and whatever text we want inside of it, we just plainly write within the tags. So for example, I'll say this is a text block. So we can see this is fairly simple. Uh, but one thing I do want to take note of is sooner or later you may run into a certain issue and that issue might be uh, if your text is really long it, it sometimes can expand outside of the parent control it's in or the window of your application. So one way of dealing with this is trimming and we trim off text and display the uh, typical ellipsis which is the dot 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 when a text is extended but is not being displayed. And we simply do this by accessing the text trimming property. So we can create another text block. And we'll say text trimming. We'll say the character ellipsis. And for the sake of being able to see things more defined, I'll set the foreground of the text block to red, foreground of this one to blue. Okay, so in here we'll just type our text like we did for the other one, but in this case we're going to have to make it pretty long to the point where it extends past the window. Very long text inside of our text block whoops gotta go just a little further there so we'll say and now we have extended past the window okay so as you can see when we reach the end of our window it'll give us a little uh, a little ellipsis. Sorry, don't mind my stuttering right now. It's kind of late for me. Been uh, uh, up since 4 a.m. So in here, we'll see our red text, which was fine, but now this one is actually having an ellipsis. But as we extend our window, we'll see it'll start showing our text, but it'll cut it off. And then when we go back, It'll just continue. Sweet, right? Now there's also another value we can set for text trimming. And this one is called word ellipsis. Which, if your intuition serves you well, it'll cut off at the last word instead of the last character that could be displayed. And again, we'll run the application real fast. Okay, so at this point they both cut off the same, but now notice the characters are displaying, but then once the word can display, there we go. Pretty cool. And a second way of dealing with it is a line break. So 
say another text block. I'm gonna change that because it's gonna bother me. Okay, so that one's purple. Let's say this foreground will be green. So with our line break, it will have a more defined way to tell the text block to break at a specific point in the text. This is the least flexible way, but can be used in certain situations. So this is line one, and we just do a tag of line break. Don't forget the slash at the end. This is line two. So you can see it breaks it exactly where we say it is and no matter how we resize the window or whatever we change around it's just going to continue to be that way. So you can see what I mean by it's a little more of a concrete method. Uh, also notice the line break is what breaks it. Doesn't matter what you do in the XAML, it could be on the same line, it's still going to do the same thing. So a final way to accomplish this is to also access the text wrapping property in the text block. So we'll copy paste. I will say this one is, uh, I don't know why I'm being indecisive about a color, but we'll just say orange. How about that? Okay. So in here, basically, we will say this is some. Um, very long text again that will extend past the window, hopefully. Okay, there we go. So what this will do is it will automatically push your text to a new line if the test exceeds the amount of space available. The available space will be defined again by the parent control or the, the size of the window of your application. And we set this by accessing its text wrapping property. We set it to wrap. So as you can see already in the designer, this will automatically break it to a new line once it reaches the end of its available space. Even in here, as we close it, open it, it'll automatically wrap. What is a text box? It's a basic text input control. It allows user entered values to be received by the application. It is capable of single and multi-lined text input. What is a text box used for? Generally, it's to retrieve plain text values entered by the user. Specifically, entering a username or password. Although in WPF, uh, you, there is another control for securely entering a password. Entering a web address. Chat applications or notepad applications. So after another brief explanation, let's jump into opening our Visual Studio and play around with text box controls. Okay, so now we can create a text box and we do so by just having an opening and closing tag, you know, so it's the text block and you do its properties and then a slash before the closing caret. And we'll say text box slash closing caret. See it pop up here in the designer. Run the application real quick. Here it is. Don't mind this little tool here, it's annoying. And as you can see, I'll simply focus the control and enter text using my keyboard and it'll put those values inside of it. So I could say, hello world. Okay, cool. <laughs> So you can type stuff in it, um, but I can also make it so this control can take multi-lined input. And we do this by allowing the control to accept the return key of your keyboard. So we'll have 
another text box. And in this, we'll set its accepts return property to true. And now I'll run the application again. And so we have hello world, or her world, I guess. And I can hit enter all I want. It's not going to do anything. If I go to our second text box that has the accepts return set to true, Let's say hello world. Again. And as you see, every time I hit the return key, it extends. So now we can enter our text like normal, but when I hit the enter key, the text box will proceed to a new line. However, it's only going to create a new line when I hit enter. If I so happen to have longer text, you will see it'll continue to extend the text on the same line, unless I use the return key. So, hello, this is a very, 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 very long text that will go past the window. And as you see, it just extends and kind of horizontally scrolls along. <coughs> so, we change this by using a same, actually not similar, but the same property we use for a text block. And if you want, you can try and take a guess. Did you guess it? Well, if you guess text wrapping property, you're correct. If we combine our accepts return property and our text wrapping property, we can obtain the typical function of your average text input control. So, let's say we want another text box. And this one has accepts return true and also it's text wrapping property set to wrap and we run our application so we got our average one line hello world and this other input that accepts the return key and now, if I say, this is a very, very, very long line that is going to wrap when it exceeds its available space. Now, as you can see, uh, once it exceeds its available space, it'll automatically break to a new line, kind of similar to our text block. And as I extend it, as I close it, it'll react accordingly. Okay guys, thank you for watching and if you've made it to this portion of the video I just want to also mention uh, you may notice some of my videos are looking different and changing and I'm doing things differently and right now I'm just experimenting with how I would like to do tutorials or the methods and I am aware of uh, some issues like you can hear my uh, loud computer behind the microphone I live on the main road near a fire department so occasionally uh, it's hard not to it's hard to keep recording every time something happens so I just give up and let it go but um, I'm aware of those kinds of issues but there's uh, as I experiment let me know what you do like that I tried what you don't like that I tried and uh, I'll try and figure a way in between. Uh, I figured that I'll do this experimentation with the control, the, the WPF control portion of the series because uh, I don't think those are as crucial to fully absorb without distractions. So yeah, so just leave comments or whatever and you know I'll do my best to improve on things but I don't think I'm doing too terrible right now. I just think I uh I think I'm a little sloppy, but I think generally I'm getting the hang of things. I think this is better than my introduction video. So, uh, yeah, just leave comments and let me know. Thanks for watching.